Welcome to Worship on the Web. As part of the Word and Table series, groups are now forming to discuss Evicted by Matthew Desmond. Four group options are available, each meeting three times during the month of May. All are welcome. In honor of Mental Health Awareness Month in May, our weekly Fresh Hope group is inviting you to join another book study and hear a presentation from the author on Tuesday, May 11th via Zoom. Pick up your free copy of Blessed Union, Breaking the Silence About Mental Illness and Marriage, located just outside the front office. The Sunday School Spring Fling will happen Sunday at 1030 and Sunday Night Live for youth in grades 6 through 12 will meet in person beginning Sunday at 5 p.m. With so many people moving to online giving or simply giving, the office would like to be a good steward of resources and stop mailing offering envelopes to those who no longer use them. If that's the case for you, please let the office know. And then finally, in-person worship begins this Sunday, May 2nd at 11.15. Worshipers will still be required to wear masks, even those who are fully vaccinated, and there will be no congregational singing to start. But we will still post worship on the web and hold drive-in worship at 9.30 for those who feel more comfortable worshiping online or outdoors. As you know, weekly services require a dedicated team of volunteers. So if you're eager to be back in the sanctuary, please fill out the online form at ctkluth.com slash volunteer or call the church office and let us know you can help. We need ushers, greeters, readers, audio and video assistants now more than ever, drive-in parking lot attendants and more to help make all this happen. Thank you for your consideration and for loving and serving the world in this way. Now centering ourselves for worship, we pause for a moment of reflection. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you give us your son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
reading from 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have not seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have for him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved of God and beloved of each other, grace to you and peace from God our Father, from Jesus our brother. Amen. Over the last year, everyone's rhythm of life changed in some way. In our household, the biggest change was not having Ellie home every day, attending school from her bedroom. It was not switching from meeting in person to meeting via Zoom weekly with the church council for the first several months. No, for us, the biggest change was doing this, recording worship on the web, making Sunday morning rather solitary and equally as odd, having the week's sermon done by Thursday afternoon. For two people who have routinely worked on sermons on Friday, Saturday, even Sunday morning, this has been an adjustment. As odd as this has been, however, the blessing of no weekend sermon writing combined with very 
few weekend events has meant we've been remarkably free on Friday and Saturday night. And to our daughter Ellie's great delight, that has meant a lot of family movie nights. At first, Brad and I used this opportunity to introduce Ellie to some of our favorites. No one should grow up without seeing Tommy Boy, the original Ghostbusters, or the Austin Powers trilogy. But then as we ran out of old favorites and the pandemic dragged on, a few of Ellie's friends got her interested in the superhero genre. That's when she discovered the Arrow and the Flash, and when we discovered Marvel. MCU, there's an acronym, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Who knew? We started at the beginning. Captain America, Iron Man, the Hulk, Guardians of the Galaxy, Black Panther, the Avenger. Every Friday night, and sometimes Saturday too, we watched our new favorite superhero battle the forces of darkness. Every Friday night, and sometimes Saturday too, I'd cringe at the PG-13 sci-fi action while my 13-year-old stared unflinchingly at the screen until the night's superhero of choice restored order to the universe and saved the galaxy once again. Now that's a satisfying Friday night. With all of these action-packed adventures still fresh in my mind, we finished the last Marvel movie about 10 days ago. I sat down to work on today's sermon and, you know, finish it by Thursday afternoon and read again today's not-so-action-packed gospel. The main crux of it, as I understand it, is this. Abide in me, says Jesus, as I abide in you. Abide in me. A lot of the things Jesus says are much more action-oriented. Jesus says things like, follow me, go and sin no more, go and do likewise, go and make disciples of all nations. Obviously, there's some action in being a Christian person. And in all fairness, there are some action words in today's gospel reading. They're just not very pleasant. All those cringeworthy action words like pruning and withering and throwing into the fire sound frightening. But really, they just point back to the not so action oriented abiding. You see, at this point in the biblical story, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure. He's telling them their rhythm of life is about to be interrupted and they will feel cut down burned, alone. But reframing that a bit, he says it's really just pruning. It's really just making way for something new. And the way to make it through all that is to abide. Abide in me, says Jesus, as I abide in you. Abide in me. Now, I don't know about you, but when people come to me with the feeling of being cut down by circumstance, as they have over the last year, my first inclination is to want to do something about it. I want to problem solve, to say something meaningful, ease the hurt, snap my fingers, and make everything right. And sometimes there are things that can be done, but sometimes the best thing to do really the only thing to do is to abide in me, says Jesus, as I abide in you. Abide in me. Our Jewish brothers and sisters have this figured out. Have you ever heard of sitting Shiva? Shiva is the week-long period of mourning following the death of a close relative. Family members gather in one home, preferably the home of the deceased, and receive visitors. It's considered a great act of kindness and compassion to pay a home visit to the mourners or to go and sit with them in their grief. But here's the catch. The visitor's job is not to say anything. In fact, according to Wikipedia, and I quote, traditionally, 
No greetings are exchanged and visitors wait for the mourners to initiate conversation or remain silent if the mourners do not do so out of respect for their bereavement. You show up at the house, but your job is not to say or do anything, but to sense God's presence abiding with that family. And in a sense, to be the presence of Christ to them. Abide in me as I abide in you, says Jesus. Abide in me. It's like the story Nadia Boltz Weber tells in the book, Pastrix, in a very powerful chapter about her clinical pastoral education or 10 weeks as a hospital chaplain. Nadia tells the story of being called to the ER. This is how she describes it. Inside the trauma room, a nurse was cutting the clothes off a motionless man in his 50s on a table. Tubes were coming out of his mouth and arms. Doctors started doing things to him not met for my eyes and sorely misrepresented on TV shows. Another nurse was hooking things up to him while a doctor put on gloves and motioned for paddles, which he then placed into the motionless man's freshly cracked open chest. A nurse stepped back to where I was standing and I leaned over to her. Everyone else seems to have a job, but what am I doing here? The nurse looked at my badge and said, your job is to be aware of God's presence in the room while we do our jobs. As the chaplain, all Nadia was supposed to do in that room was to notice God's presence abiding with this man and his family, and in a sense, to be the presence of Christ to them. To Nadia, that didn't seem nearly as important as what the doctors or nurses were doing in that moment. But according to the 15th chapter of John's gospel, there's more power in simply abiding in and with God and one another than any action-packed movie might lead us to believe. So to all of you who have done just that, who have abided with me and with this community of faith, over the past year. To all of you who've accessed worship on the web religiously, who've shown up in the parking lot, who've made phone calls, who kept up with your financial support, who learned how to use the Zoom platform, who helped with luminaries on Christmas Eve or chalked the walk for Easter, who put on layers and passed out communion or directed cars for drive-in worship, who met more often as a church council than any other church in recent history, who donated diapers and food and anything else we've asked you for. Thank you. Thank you for being the presence of God to those whom we are called and sent to love and serve. Thank you for being the presence of Christ to me and to one another. Thank you for reminding me as hopefully I have also reminded you, that Jesus abides with us and in us and will not let us go. Abide in me, says Jesus, as I abide in you. Abide in me. Hmm. Now that I think about it, maybe that is the way to save the galaxy after all. May you be very richly blessed in the hearing of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Amen.
abiding in Jesus, even as Jesus abides in us. We confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence that they lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love, those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You gather us with all the saints by the power of your Holy Spirit. With them, may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Holy table is set before us once again. Together we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. All are welcome. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Now may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. It's the body of Christ. We are called and sent to love and serve the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Go in peace, share the good news, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia. Thank you.